Let's talk about low ceilings and mountain obscuration and how this applies to us in general aviation aircraft. Now, low ceilings are typically caused by stratus clouds, and stratus clouds are really a lot like fog. There actually really is no real difference between stratus or fog. Fog typically is what we call it when we see stratus clouds low to the ground or touching the ground, and as the sun heats the ground, it tends to raise that into what we call stratus clouds. This is why when stratus clouds or fog is over land, we typically see it lowest in the early morning hours or into the evening hours and overnight during the day. Typically, solar heating, even if it is an overcast sky, will heat the ground enough to raise that fog into a low layer of stratus clouds. Stratus clouds most commonly occur when moist air mixes with a colder air mass or in any situation where the temperature and dew point spread is small. For example, southeast Alaska. Temperature dew point spread is oftentimes small, and due to the water, the glaciers, all that ice, and the cold air coming down from the Arctic, well, we get a lot of examples of stratus clouds in southeastern Alaska. It's important to note that not all ceilings are equally hazardous to a pilot. An indefinite ceiling is a lot more hazardous than an equal ceiling caused by a layer aloft. Now, in plain English, what that really means is... Well, if you have overcast clouds at 500 feet and 10 statute miles visibility, once you get to about 450 feet or 400 feet, you're probably clear of those clouds and you can probably see the ground pretty well and everything else around you. But if you have a vertical visibility of 500 feet, well, visibility is going to be greatly reduced because it's basically going to be fog all the way from the ground up to 500 feet. You never really break out clearly, and although you have flight visibility, it's greatly reduced, and especially your slant range visibility is greatly reduced. You might be able to look down, straight down, and see the ground pretty well, but looking forward to see a runway may be much more difficult, or even worse, looking forward to try to avoid a mountain. That brings us to the next part of this video regarding mountain obscuration, or Airmit Sierra for mountain obscuration. Oftentimes you've probably heard your weather briefer tell you over the phone there's an Airmit Sierra for mountain obscuration and tell you a valid time and a valid area that it's good for. What that really means is mountains are partially obscured by clouds or maybe entirely obscured by clouds. This is especially hazardous to us because if you accidentally enter into a cloud, well, that soft fluffy cloud may turn to hard granite very, very quickly as if you don't know how to get out of that cloud you just entered into. The only thing more hazardous than trying to duck under a cloud layer when flying around mountains to remain VFR would be to climb over that cloud layer when flying around mountains that are obscured by clouds to try to remain VFR. The hazard here is the clouds are touching the mountains, as we see in these videos here. The clouds go all the way to the trees, all the way to the rocky edge of the mountains. So, for this example here, well, you may say, hey, it's clear over the water, but, you know, that water's 40 degrees, and I don't have any survival gear to go fly over that water with. So that would be very hazardous to me if my engine quit, and I ended up in 40 degree water. I wouldn't survive very long. And you look at the clouds and the mountains, and you say, well, gee, there's not much room between those clouds and mountains. I don't want to go underneath the clouds and fly over land. I think my best bet is to fly above the clouds, yet be over land, so in case my engine quits, I won't get my feet wet but at least I'll be able to descend over land. The problem with that scenario is if your engine quits, well, you'll probably lose other instruments like your vacuum-driven instruments, so you won't necessarily have gyroscopes to keep you level as you descend through those clouds. Even if you do have gyroscopes to keep you level and you wind up impacting the mountain wings level, mountains still hurt quite a bit whether your wings level or not. The idea here is that these clouds that you're flying over, although you may be able to see through them vertically, once you get into them, your slant range visibility will be reduced to virtually nothing, and you won't even know when the trees or rocks are coming as you impact them. You will not be able to find a safe, suitable landing site. You will likely never break out of the clouds before impacting the mountain itself. This is what makes it so dangerous when we have low ceilings forecast or airments for mountain obscuration forecast along our route of flight. Not only do you have to ensure that you have an adequate ceiling for takeoff and landing at your departure airport, as well as at your destination airport, you need to ensure that if there's any varying terrain between those two points, that the ceiling will be adequate along the entire route. For example, you might have a 3,000 foot ceiling at your departure and destination airport, yet en route the terrain rises to 2,000 feet and you're only left with 1,000 feet of room between the ground and the ceiling. So you wind up with a low ceiling. It may be even more hazardous where you wind up with a low ceiling, plus you have mountains that are obscured into the clouds because they rise well above that. Perhaps they rise to five or 6,000 feet up into the clouds. 
So we often see pilots duck under the clouds because they know it's dangerous to fly above them, and perhaps they're not instrument rated, so they don't want to get stuck up above the clouds. They think they'll just go ahead and descend below the clouds and perhaps maybe fly over the water a little bit, just at the sides of the mountains. The hazard here is as it begins to rain and your visibility is reduced through your windscreen, plus you fly into deteriorating visibility, it can be very easy to enter into a cloud and without advanced avionics and really good situational awareness, you may not know which way to get out quickly and safely back to good VFR conditions. The key is don't put yourself in that position and don't push things so far that you wind up in a position similar to that. What you're seeing video of is not good safe flying. These are all examples of what not to do and when things have been pushed too far already and you're losing the number of options remaining. We're not saying that you cannot go flying on days like these. We're really saying that on days like these, you need to be flying in multi-engine aircraft with two pilots with appropriate redundant systems to ensure safety. For example, Alaska Airlines on their 737. Given that you likely don't fly a 737 with another pilot on board, and you most likely fly a single engine aircraft with just yourself on board and perhaps your friends and family but not another pilot, well, the best recommendation we can give you here, the takeaway from this video, is ultimately to check the forecast thoroughly, ensure that there will be no low ceilings at your point of departure, at your destination, or anywhere along the route, and ensure that if there is mountain obscuration along your route, that you are staying well away from the mountains so that there is no risk of you ever encountering terrain accidentally due to reduced visibility or low ceilings, perhaps accidentally getting into a cloud. At the first signs of low ceilings or low visibility, use good ADM, turn back to where it is safe, VFR weather, and land, wait for the weather to improve, or choose a different route of flight.